All right, everyone, welcome so much to uh, the next CBS Women Sunday morning presentation. It's the 15th and today we have uh, Stephen Herbert here to talk. He is an expert in health insurance. And since we are in the open enrollment period for Obamacare and Medicare, I really um, was excited to find him, especially in this time of COVID when many of us have suffered job losses and may have um, different insurance needs and insurance questions. So with that, I'm going to pass the mic over to Stephen Herbert, who, um, who knows what he's talking about. Over to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. And you can hear me okay, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, yeah, I, I met Karen and she initially asked me to talk about the, uh, the Affordable Care Act and people getting laid off. And then we also got into a discussion of uh, Medicare. So um, she asked me to discuss these two topics. Um, so that's what I'll do, I guess, in about uh, 20 minutes or so on each and then uh, open it up to questions. So let's just start with um, the full name of this law is the Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Uh, that's kind of been shortened down to Affordable Care Act or ACA or Obamacare is a common reference to this law. Uh, passed March 23rd, 2010. And actually the first year it went into effect was um, January 1 of 2014. So really we're in uh, maybe our seventh year that we're going into this. Uh, so what did the Affordable Care Act do? Uh, the main big picture is uh, prior to the Affordable Care Act, health insurance was regulated by the states. So each state uh, regulated health insurance the way they wanted to regulate it. Um, so the big change was now the federal government regulates health insurance. And uh, so that's the big picture. Uh, what did it do? One of the main things that it did uh, um, that you probably heard about is that there, uh, there are no pre-existing uh, with these Affordable Care Act plans. Now, one of the reasons you know, that, that ties into the no pre-existing, so therefore there are certain enrollment periods when you can enroll in, a, in an Affordable Care Act health plan. Uh, the, the main, there's an open enrollment period, which is going on right now, uh, November 1st through December 15th. Uh, anybody, well, anybody will, will cover it legal, legal, with anybody with a legal status in the United States uh, can apply and get coverage. Uh, the coverage during this open Roman period would be effective January 1, 2021. Uh, basically, this is for people that are under age 65, uh, U.S. citizens, or have a legal status in the United States and are filing a tax return. Um, now you can buy for a child only, but in general, you know, it's uh, if you need to be filing tax return, uh, be a legal status in the United States. Some exceptions, I have seen people uh, bring their parents that live in a foreign country uh, and somehow uh, get legal entry into the United States and they're over 65 and we're able to get them health insurance under the Affordable Care Act. So that's open enrollment. Uh, the other major enrollment period is what they call, they call it SEP, Special Enrollment Periods. Uh, this would be like our initial conversation, Karen, you're working for a company, you have group health insurance and you get laid off. That is going to immediately trigger it's typically 60 days open enrollment period to buy an individual policy in the Affordable Care Act. So if you have group insurance, you're laid off, uh, then, you're, then you're able to get a policy uh, 
typically, you know, if you're laid off, whatever, uh, you know, October 31st, then, you know, as long if you do it in the month of October, you could get a November 1 effective date. If you apply in November, typically it's a December 1 effective date. So this couple of little rules in there. I won't go too much into the weeds, but that's that's a basic. So you have an open enrollment period. Any, anybody can do what they want or these special enrollment periods. Uh, other special enrollment periods would be, uh, say you live in, uh, uh, say you live in Dallas and you move to Houston, that would create a special enrollment period. Uh, you get married, divorced, childbirth, these things create special enrollment periods that you're able to get a, um, um, uh, a policy. Uh, no, Karen, can you hear please, the background? Karen, can we get somebody to mute? Please mute everybody. Oh, certainly. Um, hold on. I will uh, figure out who is not muted. Everyone, everyone's muted now, okay. except for, okay. oh, it's, you know so, what, I'm uh, not muted. Okay, so, um, so that's the enrollment periods. Um, the main website, and maybe you, you want to put this up, I think you have it, is healthcare.gov. Uh, uh, we did have a picture of it, Karen, one of those, uh, 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 so the main website is healthcare.gov. There it is. Um, okay website can get very confusing when you get in there, uh, but there is a lot of information. Uh, how do you determine income? Who qualifies? Um, and if you and we're going to get into some the qualifications, but if you qualify for what's called advanced premium tax credit or cost share reduction, you would have to go through this website to get those benefits from the government. So let's um, let's put up that um, income chart. Uh, I sent you those. Fe yeah, federal payroll. So basically. Um, Qualifying for tax credits, which would be, you might, might be referred to as subsidies. Uh, basically what they are is that the premium would be reduced. You would get money from the federal government to pay part or all of your income, depending on, and here's kind of the, the tricky part with this, they're gonna ask you, let's say it's open enrollment and you go in there now for 2021, they're gonna ask you to estimate your 2021 income. So it's not this year's income, it's estimating next year's income, which you know can be tricky for a lot of people. Hey, you know, I was working, I got laid off, you know, I hope to get a job next year, but who knows? So it is kind of, can be kind of tricky, uh, you can estimate, and then if your situation changes in 2021, then you notify this um, marketplace uh, about your changes and you can change uh, your situation during the year. Uh, by the way, healthcare.gov, marketplace, exchange, these uh, different words, all kind of referring to this healthcare.gov and this process of getting assistance on your premium. So who's eligible for premium? So you could see on this chart, a single person who is a household size, a single person who makes between $12,760 in 2021 and $51,040 would be eligible for assistance on the marketplace uh, with their premium. Um, the really sweet spot on Obamacare is uh, incomes between 12.7 and the 150% column, 19,000. Um, okay, and, and so the, that would be, so with the Obamacare, the lower the income, 
you know, the, the, the more assistance you can get. The, again, the two types of assistance are called advanced premium tax credit, sometimes called the subsidy. This is money reducing your, your um, uh, uh, premium. And the other thing is cost share reduction. Let me stay on the uh, uh, subsidy for a minute. So for example, if you're a single person and you're uh, making, a, a, you say, well, I think I'm gonna make $20,000 next year. And let's say the, um, the program says, okay, you're gonna get $400 a month towards your premium from the federal government. This all shakes out Next year, say January 2022, when you go to do your 2021 tax return is where it all kind of shakes out. So if you said, I'm going to make 20,000 and they gave you 400 a month, you do your tax return and you make 30,000. When you do your tax return, it's going to, something's going to go with your tax return that, oh, you told us you were going to make 20 we gave you 400 a month, you actually made 30. If we knew that, we would only give you 300 a month, that $100 difference you owe us back. Um, so that's where it all kind of uh, 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 trues up is when you do your tax return in the following year. So uh, have I heard people, you know, they gave a low estimate and then they made a lot of money and they wound up paying a lot back in their taxes. Yep, that happens. Um, or conversely, if you say, I think I'm going to make 20 and you wind up making 15, you could actually get more back in your tax return. Above the incomes on this chart, you're going, you can get an Affordable Care Act plan. You're just going to pay full price. Uh, below incomes on this chart, uh, technically, it'll say, you know, apply for Medicaid, see if you apply for Medicaid. Uh, Texas didn't expand Medicaid, so we still have a gap on the uh, uh, lower incomes uh, between Medicaid kicking in and the Affordable Care Act kicking in. Um, so if you get, uh, how this works, so let's say the premium is a thousand dollars a month and you're getting a $600 subsidy from the government, you would pay, you would pay $400 a month to the insurance company and the government would pay the other 600. And that's how it actually works. The other thing you could, uh, apply, uh, qualify for is what's called cost sharing reductions. What that is, is the deductible and the out-of-pocket is reduced. So normally you might have a, a plan with a, a $6,000 deductible and an 8,500 ultimate out-of-pocket. Uh, but if you're lower income, that plan might turn into a zero deductible and 1,200 out-of-pocket. So you could qualify for both money to reduce your premium and this cost sharing where your deductible uh, and your out-of-pocket and your co-pays for things are dramatically reduced. Uh, again, in this chart, people that are in the 100 to the 150% level really get a, a, a lot of assistance. Uh, again, I've seen uh, zero deductible, 1,200 $1, out of pocket. Um, when you're in this and you're getting both the uh, subsidy and the cost sharing, your best value is in the silver plans. Obamacare is their metallic levels. All the plans are either gold, silver, or bronze. If you're getting this cost sharing, your best value, where you're going to get that the reduction in deductible and out of pocket are in the silver plans. You could choose any plan you want. So many people like a bronze plan, which, you know, maybe has an $8,000 deductible, but, you know, you could have a zero premium. So some people go that route, oh, zero premium, that's attractive, even though it's an $8,000 deductible. Again, when you're getting both, 
uh, your best value is in the silver plan. Um, help uh, with this, you can on that healthcare.gov, use a telephone number on that website, you can call them and they can help you apply uh, for the Affordable Care Act plans. There's also uh, things called navigators. Uh, again, on healthcare.gov, there's a button you could search for those. These people are, I kind of looked around here, there was like St. Hope. I'm not sure who these people are and Legacy. Uh, I think these are maybe nonprofit organizations uh, where they have these uh, navigators that can help you apply for the Affordable Care Act. So you can call healthcare.gov, you can look in for a navigator or any independent insurance agent who's licensed to do business on the marketplace uh, can help you. Uh, there's no um, there's no cost uh, using any of this help. There's no cost at all. Uh, the rates on the marketplace are completely regulated by the government. Um, so it, it is what it is. And if you call healthcare.gov, that's kind of funny, you know, but it's true what they'll tell you. It is what the computer says it is. So you go and apply and, you know, what the computer says you're entitled to is, is, is what you get. Uh, let's see, I did mention you do have to file a tax return. Yes, you can buy for a child only. It would be at full price. Uh, to get this assistance from the marketplace, uh, you would have to file a tax return. Oh, one other thing on this, um, uh, on this income chart, there's a cliff. And, and in general, older people get more assistance than younger people. Um, and there is a cliff. So let's just say we go down to a, a family of three, mom and dad and one child or, or a single parent with two children, family of three, the maximum income is, uh, looks like 86,880. If you made 80,000, you're liable you know, to get a subsidy uh, and help from the government. If you make $86,861, it disappears altogether. So this is uh, way more dramatic, like in, uh, let's say a couple, a six couple at 62 years old, that's making, uh, says what well, we think we're gonna make 60,000, they're liable to get a pretty good subsidy. And if they wind up making 69,000, it completely goes away. There's a cliff uh, that if you make over this, cert, this maximum dollar amount, the subsidy, uh, completely disappears. Um, one, I think, um, kind of uh, area where this um, uh, marketplace, where maybe there could be some improvement in this law, in my opinion, if you have a spouse that works and has group health insurance available to you, then the rest of your family is, you know, they can go and buy an Affordable Care Act plan, but they're not eligible for any of these subsidies or cost sharing reductions. So, you know, let's say you're, you know, you're, you've got a, a husband and wife with two children, family of four, and uh, one of the adults um, works in a nursing home or whatever, works wherever, and makes 30000 a year, and that that one is, uh, and then they do, uh, he gets group insurance, he or she gets group insurance through their employer. Well, now the spouse and the two kids are not able to get a subsidy uh, on the Affordable Care Act, uh, even though the family size and an income of 30,000 would normally you know, get them a very large subsidy. So that's that's one thing, you know, if a spouse has group insurance, that can create a problem. Um, so really um, other options, a couple other options um, that, um, that are out there. Uh, one is a short-term plans. Um, so someone who's very healthy uh, might 
say that, well, I can just buy the short-term plan. Uh, initially, short-term plans were designed, you know, you're in between jobs for a month or two or three. Uh, once the Affordable Care Act came out and the rates skyrocketed for these premiums, um, an alternative, not necessarily recommending it, is a, a short-term plan. You can buy them now for a year, some of them up to three years. Uh, Short-term plans do not cover pre-existing conditions. Short-term plans um, are typically high deductible, uh, don't cover the wellness. And again, they, they ask medical questions. So if you're very, very healthy, it might be an option. I don't necessarily recommend it. And another option is group insurance. If you, uh, have a business and you have a, a W-2 employee beside yourself, you might be able to form a small group and then get group health insurance. And I guess a little background why I'm saying that is all the plans on the um, marketplace uh, are in, in Texas and in most of the country are HMOs. So I don't know how much I should go into a, a detail of uh, what's actually available, but they all are HMOs. So if you're looking, you know, they all have networks. Uh, you got to be, um, you know, careful if you, if you like your doctor, you know, the doctor may or may not be in network. Um, if you like a certain hospital, you got to be careful because the hospital that you like may or may not be in network. So certainly things you need to be aware of um, is what doctors are in the network and what hospitals are in the network. Uh, typically an HMO is going to mean that you, well, it does mean that you have to use a doctor in the network. Most of the plans in Harris County are what called open access HMO. Uh, which means that you have to use a doctor in the network, but you do not need a referral from a primary care physician. So most of the HMOs in Harris County are open access. You have to stay in network, but you can go to any doctor in the network without a referral. Really, the only one that's not like that is Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. They do require uh, you visit your primary care referral uh, and get a referral. Um, I think that covers the uh, Affordable Care Act, uh, Karen. I'll just go on to uh, Medicare. Yeah. Okay. Um, Quick question: Do you do you want to take questions on? I thought this Obamacare might be a good. Yeah, I thought this might be a good time to stop and, and handle the questions on the Affordable Care Act before we move to Medicare. If um, anybody had. Um, Morris, looks like you're up. <laughs> if you want to unmute yourself. So this is not Affordable Care Act, but uh, you can also get insurance through professional societies, uh, like uh, we have dental, through teacher's retirement system, or you can get uh, insurance through ARP or any other organizations. I, I don't know. I don't think that relates to the Affordable Care Act. So um, one of the things that's available to me is the through the state bar association but when you go look at all the state bar association plans they take you right back to the marketplace plans so it, it sort of is, doesn't get you anywhere sometimes through mine other organizations may do a better job but i, I think i'm just i guess counseling caution if you think you're up, upgrading your opportunities you may not be I would, right, and generally agree with that, right? They, maybe they have it, but really it's basically all Affordable Care Act, right? Oh, the other thing I was going to say, just bringing that up, a lot of times I get that question. Oh, I don't want to buy an Affordable Care Act. I just want to go direct to Blue Cross and, and buy it directly from them. Um, so that kind of goes back to my first point. Uh, the Affordable Care Act is a complete federal takeover of the health insurance industry. So where is your buying uh, an insurance policy from an insurance company? And some of them you can go direct, like you can go directly to Blue Cross. You don't have to go through the marketplace. 
Um, but they're all, uh, they're all following the guidelines of the Affordable Care Act. You know, so some people say, well, I don't want an HMO. I'll just go direct to Blue Cross. Surely they have something. No, they don't. Uh, everything is uh, controlled by the Affordable Care Act. Um, so in my opinion, it's sort of like you are buying from an insurance company, but they're completely regulated, you know, utilities of the uh, federal government. So, uh, uh, and maybe there is an association out there that has something, but that's what I found also. It does take it back to the Affordable Care Act. Karen, can I ask a question? This is Shelly. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sorry, I, I, I agree. Yeah. Um, so, hi, Stephen, so question for you. So I, I financial planner, and so I have clients, a, a particular situation where she wants to retire at 61, she'll have co COBRA for 18 months, and we're trying to figure out how to bridge the gap between the end of COBRA and Medicare. Um, so it, what you're saying is, is that is that she goes and, and she's got assets, so she could you know pay a hefty premium. You're saying if she goes to say Blue Cross or Aetna or United, whoever, that what she's going to get is going to be exactly what she would get on the healthcare exchange. Could you clarify that for me? Yes, that's correct. So, so wow. Uh, very common, retired at 60, 18 months of COBRA, oh, COBRA ends, which by the way, is a, is a qualifying event to get an Affordable Care Act policy. Okay. If, if you're now you're an individual and you bridge the gap and you've got pre-existing conditions, you know, so mm -hmm. this is good, there would be no pre-existing condition, but really your only choice are is um, Affordable Care Act policies. Uh, and they're all HMOs. Um, Got six companies, so there are six companies doing business in Harris County. Um, one you've heard of, probably the other five you've never heard of. So uh, one is Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. Uh, then you're going to have Community Health Choice, Molina, Ambetter, Oscar. We have a new um, entry for 2021, uh, Friday, Friday Health Insurance, which is the name of insurance company. That's it. Those are your choices, and they're all HMOs. Now, if they have their own business, and perhaps one of the spouse, you know, there's an owner, and maybe the spouse is a W-2 employee of the business, mm -hmm. or, and I'm just the messenger here, if they both, as husband and wife, both get 1065 K-1s, that would qualify for them to form a small group. And when you, and that's limited too, and that's mostly Blue Cross Blue Shield of Texas. Um, um, uh, we won't go too much in the weeds, but you can form a small group. And then that would give you the opportunity to purchase a plan with a PPO network on a small group plan. But, but that is correct. Everything is, is controlled by the Affordable Care Act now for individual policies. And what Blue Cross is selling direct, it's, it's the same parameters. I mean, they have, they actually have a couple plans off exchange, which means that you're not on the marketplace, but they're all, um, they're all Affordable Care Act plans. They're all designed, they're all HMOs and they're all similar design. Hmm. Okay. Thank you. That was very helpful. Appreciate it. A common question. Is that a, is then is it a good time then for Stephen to move on to Medicare? Okay. Okay. All right. So Medicare, um, Medicare is basically insurance for people 65 and older. Uh, some people that have qualified for social security disability after 24 months, they also receive Medicare. Um, there's a sign up period for Medicare. So if you're, if you're uh, turning 65, the sign up period is three months prior to your six, the month you turn 65, the month you turn 65 and three months after you turn 65. So there's a seven month enrollment period. 
Uh, if you're taking Social Security when you turn 65, the government finds you um, and they typically sign you up for Medicare A and B, and we're going to get into all these letters. Um, they'll sign you up automatically. If you're not, then you do have to sign up for Medicare. Um, and the main website, and I might circle back, but the main website is medicare.gov. So the main website for Medicare is medicare.gov. Yeah, we got it. This is actually a very good website. Um, a lot of information. Uh, just if you're on Medicare now, on the top right, that mymedicare.gov login, uh, if you have not logged in there, uh, Take a look. It's got all your information. It's got all your claims. Uh, this is the open enrollment for Medicare too. A lot of people are reviewing their drug cards. It is very easy for you to review your drug card on this mymedicare.gov and maybe pick a drug card that might uh, be a better option for you for 2021. So this is a great website. So, uh, for sign in the top left, sign up changes. You can sign up for Medicare during this open enrollment period I met, mentioned right there. Uh, questions about Medicare costs, very good pages there, what it covers, Part D. Um, so this is a very good website. This is where you would go to sign up. Again, if you're already on Medicare, this top right, mymedicare.gov, uh, highly recommended. It's got all your information. If you're on original Medicare with a drug card, you can verily, very easily determine uh, what is your best drug card for 2021. That's a nice feature. Okay, all these letters, A, B, C, D, blah, blah, blah. Original Medicare is part A and part B. Oh, let's stay with part A, that's great, Karen. Um, Again, original Medicare is part A and B. A is basically hospitals and hospice care. B, uh, doctor visits, lab work, MRI, CAT scan, chemotherapy, outpatient surgery, or, or you know, items that would be under B. Original Medicare does not cover prescription drugs, and it does not cover uh, normal vision or dental. So, I mean, if you had cataracts, that's a medical disease, it, it would certainly cover it. Your normal eye exam uh, is not covered. Dental basically is not covered under Medicare. Um, if you're on original Medicare, uh, well, let, and then let's talk about C, well, excuse me. Um, so let's go with this Medicare A. There is like major gaps in Medicare uh, that uh, you should be aware of. So Medicare, if you are hospitalized in 2021, you will pay a $1,484 deductible. And then that's pretty, that'll cover you for 60 days. The real concern is, and unfortunately, my brother and my mom were in the hospital for a long period of time last year, and I really started to realize this. Um, it's clear on this little chart here, if you're in the hospital day 61 to 90, Medicare pays everything but $371 a month. So do the math, 371 times 30 is a pretty big number. Uh, there's a one-time lifetime additional 30 days, but beyond technically beyond the 90 days, if you're in the hospital 90 or more days, then Medicare covers everything but $742 per day. So if you, you know, seven times 42, 742 times 30 and is over $21,000 a month. Um, so there's some gaps there. Uh, let's maybe go to the part B. Did I, have, I don't know if I have a part B. Part B is a little bit more simple. Part B with the doctors, lab, chemotherapy, 
in 2021, uh, you're going to have a 203. Okay, this is the cost page. That's fine. So basically, the benefits of um, Part B Medicare in 2021, you will have a 203 calendar year deductible, not bad. And then Medicare pays 80%, you pay 20%. Now, there is no stop loss on original Medicare, uh, meaning that you pay the 20% just um, up to, there's no maximum out of your pocket. Um, yeah, I don't know what chemotherapy costs, but let's just say it was $5,000 a month, you're gonna pay 20% or $1,000 a month, and that is ongoing. So, um, Let's go back. Okay, let's go to, we're on this page. So I'm gonna discuss a little bit more. Let me just talk, jump over to the cost of Medicare. Uh, in 20, most people think, a lot of people think Medicare is free. Uh, Medicare is not free. Um, part A is free, part B cost money. Most people, and you can see the chart, single person, married, filing jointly under those amounts, in 2021, it's going to be $148.50. By the way, they look back two years on your income. So somebody who's returning 65 this month in 2021, they're going to look at your 2019 tax return uh, to determine what they're going to charge you for Medicare. Um, Upsetting to a lot of people in Houston. Oh, and I was in, I'm in the oil business in 2018. I made a lot of money. Now I'm retiring. I'm not going to make so much money. Uh, that's the way the system works. They look two years back. Uh, there is an appeals process, but uh, you can see the chart. They're going to charge you uh, for that. There's also, and I don't know if I had it or not, there's an upcharge on the drug cards, which we haven't. There's a high income upcharge. On the drug cards, most people, like a married couple up to 174,000 of income, uh, will just pay. Um, no, you were on that page. That was good, Karen. You moved, moved to that. Yeah, so there we are. So, uh, single person up to 87,000 and married up to 174,000 would pay nothing additional on their drug card. Incomes above that, you're going to pay an upcharge on a um, on a on a on having a drug card a couple of programs for lower income people um, and these are government programs you know they're low income what all the qualifications are you know I'm not an expert in that area but there are two programs for lower income people that you need to be aware of one is called a Medicare savings program Medicare savings program this will help people with that monthly cost of Part B. And then there's another program called Low Income Subsidy. This helps lower income people with the cost of drugs. Um, by the way, you can access government benefits by dialing 211 on your phone. Uh, that will connect you to government benefits. If you think you may qualify or know someone, uh, if you dial 211, you'll get kind of a voicemail thing. I would listen for the prompt that says Medicaid. And then just whoever finally answers, say you've heard about uh, low in, uh, Medicare savings program and low income subsidy, and you want to know if you qualify. If you can get it, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll help you again with that monthly premium for Part B and um, help people with drug cards. Okay, so since there are gaps in, 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 in Medicare, well, there's, there's two basic options that you have when you go on Medicare. Uh, and then a lot of choices under these options. And by the way, let me say this, is something I like to say, there's no right or wrong answers on Medicare. 
There are just choices and what's right for you. And every individual situation is different. And so people have choices. Um, your uh, basic Medicare, again, is A and B. I've kind of pointed out some of the gaps there. Uh, and that there's, uh, so what is recommended with original Medicare is to purchase a Medicare supplement that fills in the gaps on in Medicare. And if you want prescription drug coverage to purchase a prescription drug card. So option one is original Medicare with a supplement and a drug card. Option two is a Medicare Advantage plan, sometimes called Part C, CAT, Medicare Advantage. We've all seen Joe Namath, you know, hey, get your maximum benefits on late night if you watch any late night TV or even daytime TV. Um, so what is Medicare Advantage? Medicare Advantage came out in the mid 90s. Bill Clinton was president, Newt Gingrich and the Republicans took over Congress. And the idea was that private insurance companies could manage Medicare better than Medicare could manage Medicare. So basically what you're doing with a Medicare Advantage plan, you are giving your Medicare over to an insurance company you are leaving original Medicare. Your Medicare will be this Medicare Advantage plan. Um, and the, the Medicare Advantage plans, uh, are, they're getting, the insurance company is getting money from the federal government to manage your Medicare. That's why you see these commercials, no premium. And, uh, you know, that's where it's coming from because the insurance company is getting money from the federal government to manage your Medicare. Medicare Advantage plan is going to cover everything that original Medicare, original Medicare covers. Uh, plus, most of them will include drug coverage. A lot of times you'll see the, uh, the term MAPD, Medicare Advantage prescription drug. So that's a Medicare Advantage plan that covers prescription drugs. Sometimes people like veterans might have drug coverage uh, through um, uh, the Veterans Association. And so they like their drug coverage and they don't want it. There are some things called Medicare Advantage without the drug card. Uh, most people that are, you know I work with, it's Medicare Advantage prescription drug. Uh, these plans are typically either HMOs or PPOs. An HMO is going to have uh, a, uh, again, an HMO network that you do have to stay in the network of doctors. Um, most of them are traditional HMOs that you got to go to your primary care referral, right? primary care doctor and get a referral to a specialist in the network. There will also be Medicare Advantage PPOs. These are typically have a little bit bigger network and will not require you to get a referral from your specialist, uh, from your primary to go see a specialist. Um, the Medicare, all the Medicare Advantage plans will give you emergency cover. Well, let's talk about the HMOs. They're all localized HMOs out of the area. You have emergency coverage. Some have urgent care coverage. Uh, the PPOs, typically, if you're traveling, you know, visiting the grandkids in Wisconsin or wherever, you got sick, you could call the number on your card and they would find you a PPO, a Medicare Advantage provider uh, in the area to go to. So the key thing though with Medicare Advantage is going to be a network of doctors. Um, the HMOs, you would need a referral. Um, so, uh, and, and, online, and, and again, it covers everything original Medicare A and B coverage covers They and include, includes the drug card. It's packaged a little bit differently than original Medicare. It's um, actuarially equivalent, but packaged definitely. And also unlike original Medicare, 
Medicare Advantage will have a maximum out of pocket. Um, typically, the HMOs are going to have a lower maximum out of pocket, something around $3,400. Uh, typically, the PPOs are going to have a higher maximum out of pocket, uh, something in the neighborhood of 6,700, although they did up that, they now can be a maximum of 7,500 out of pocket. Um, I generalize with people um, when I talk to people, and this is completely generalized. Again, there's no right or wrong answers. Um, there's people that you know, I want the freedom to go to any doctor hospital that I want to go to. I don't want any hassle with that. I'd rather pay an extra monthly premium now uh, to know that if and when I do get sick, I won't have anything out of pocket. That's typically original Medicare with a supplement and a drug card. Other people are like, hmm, no premium. That's attractive to me. Um, if we find their doctor in the network, which again, if you're thinking Medicare Advantage and you like your doctor, you really want to make sure there's, your doctor is in the network. Um, so some people are like, if they find their doctor in the network, well, that's fine with me, or they're flexible about doctors. And if there's co-pays or a major claim and there will be some out of pocket, you know, they'll, they'll kind of shrug it off and, oh, well, I'll just worry about that later. I like the no premium. Uh, and these Medicare Advantage plans, as all the commercials advertise heavily, uh, many of them do include dental and vision hearing. Again, when you see the dental, read it carefully. And to get the full benefits of the dental plan, you would have to use a dentist uh, in the insurance company network. Um, Let's see, drug card is, you know, not mandatory if you, if you don't buy a drug card when you're first eligible and then purchase one later, uh, there will be a lifetime penalty that kind of basically like 35 cents a month or like $4.20 a year. So if you went a year without a drug card and then decided to get a drug card, you'd pay the cost of the drug card plus a lifetime approximate $4.20 a month penalty. I guess they put the penalty in to encourage you to purchase a drug card, even if you don't are not necessarily taking any prescription drugs. Uh, let's see what else did I want to talk about. Um, Subsidy savings plan. Um, oh, open enrollment period. So this is a, so Medicare Advantage plans and Medicare prescription drug cards have an open enrollment period, which is actually now you can change your prescription drug coverage um, or your Medicare Advantage plan, or you can leave your Medicare Advantage plan and go back to original Medicare or you can leave original Medicare and go to a Medicare Advantage plan. So open enrollment period is October 15th to December 7th. Any changes you make during this time uh, become effective January 1. So if you're on Medicare Advantage and yeah, you wanna look around, your doctor left the network and he was on Aetna, now he's on United Healthcare, you wanna make a change, you can do that at this time. Um, if, uh, again, your drug card, if you're on Medicare, go to medicare.gov, log in on the top right. It is very easy to determine what your best value drug card is for 2021. And uh, these drug cards do, I mean, they're different. I mean, they're all basically, there's a government um, structure to these drug cards, but they have different formularies, meaning they cover different drugs differently. So it really depends on what drugs you're taking, um, what's your best value and where you get your drugs. Cause they all have kind of, um, some of them have uh, preferred pharmacies. Um, so if you like HEB or CVS or Walgreens, whatever you like, um, you put that in and it'll again, 
give, and it'll give you an idea of what your cost will be for 2021 based on the drugs you're taking now and what drug cart is your best value. So I, I do suggest everybody's on Medicare do that. Um, again, um, the uh, open enrollment period is now, we discussed the initial enrollment period. If you're working, let's say you're working and you work for a company and they pay for your health insurance and you turn 65, you do not have to go on Medicare. This is if you have group health insurance that's Medicare equivalent. Technically, your employer is supposed to send you a letter each year telling you that your group insurance is Medicare equivalent. Uh, but let's say you're 65, you're continuing to work. Uh, you'll pick up A because A is free and then you'll delay getting part B because part B costs money and there's really no sense for paying part B if you have good health insurance through your employer and your employer is paying for it. Once you're in that situation, any time in the future, you, you, have, you can leave your employer's group coverage. You don't have to be laid off or retire. You can just, you know, whatever, make that decision. And you can pick up Part B and then get guaranteed issue on the supplement, the drug card, or a Medicare Advantage plan. Um, again, during this open enrollment period, you can change your drug card, change your Medicare Advantage plan. If you're on Medicare Advantage and you want to go back to original Medicare, you can do that guaranteed and you can get a guaranteed drug card. Now, you mentioned, I you notice I didn't mention um, the supplement during this open enrollment period. The supplement open enrollment period is when you turn 65 or you first qualify for Part B Medicare. That will be a guaranteed issue supplement. There's no pre-existing conditions with Medicare or on the supplement or on the Medicare Advantage plans either. Once you choose your Medicare supplement in the future, you can change your supplement at any time, but it is not guaranteed. So in other words, you buy a supplement two, five, 10 years from now, the rate goes up and the supplement rates do go up slowly over time. And you shop around and you see, oh, look at this supplement is less expensive than mine. You can apply for it. They're going to ask you medical questions. They can accept you. They can reject you. So again, open enrollment period, guaranteed the Medicare Advantage changing, drug cards changing. The supplement is only guaranteed when you first pick it up, either when you turn 65 or first pick up B. Um, Stephen, I, I hate to interrupt. Thought, you have a okay. number of well, questions. I thought I had a camera member. Go ahead. You have I'm a couple done. of questions in the chat, and, um, and I definitely wanted to make sure to have time for them in case people have somewhere sure. they need to go. But I just it. wanted to show the um the last slide in the pack is is Stephen's contact information and um and I will send the PowerPoint on to um the people that registered in um for the meeting. So I wanted to take that down, stop the screen sharing, and just share the two questions that you received. Um, oh, one other um, thing I just wanted to say oh, real sorry. quick, if I can. Um, if you're um, 65 and leaving employment, do not take COBRA. Go directly to Medicare. If you take COBRA and go past 65, that's not a qualifying event to pick up Part B later. So that's the one other thing I wanted to say. If you're turning 65 and you, you, uh, you're leaving your company and they offer you COBRA, you, you have to go to Medicare. Um, and in most cases, Medicare is, is financially a better option anyway. Okay. Any okay. Questions? Yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, in the chat box, uh, Marta asks, what is the difference in cost between the Medicare and the Advantage plan? So 
original Medicare. Um, again, good question. Uh, brings up another thought. Regardless of whether you're on original Medicare or move to a Medicare Advantage plan, you are required to continue to pay your Part B premium. That does not go away. Um, uh, Medicare supplements depends on your age, gender, where you live. And um, so let's just say a supplement G, which is the richest supplement that you could buy, uh, might cost $140, $150 a month. Again, they go up over time. Uh, most of the Medicare Advantage plans have zero premium. Um, some of them have some premiums. There's a lot of options at zero premium. Did that answer the question, I hope? Now I can't hear you, Karen. I muted myself because the kids are moving around. Um, Marta, are you good with that? She's oh, the question is, you pay to Medicare for Part B the same amount that you pay for Advantage Part B, and then for Part um, D, do you pay the same amount to Medicare and to Advantage? So Part B, yes, you have, even if you go to a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to continue to pay your Part B premium. So you pay to Medicare and to Medicare Advantage? Well, the, that means twice. Well, typically a lot, most of the Medicare Advantage plans have no premium. So, so the Medicare Advantage typically is gonna be free quote unquote. And that's kind of why I explained that earlier because they're, the insurance company is getting money from the federal government to manage your Medicare. That's why there's no additional cost on a Medicare Advantage plan, but you continue to pay your Part B premium. If you're taking Social Security, they're taking that out of your Social Security account, and they will continue to do that even if you go to a zero premium Medicare Advantage plan. Okay. If you're on original Medicare, then yes, you have to buy a separate drug card that costs money, and you highly recommend you buy a supplement that, that costs money. If you're on Medicare Advantage, typically there's no additional premium. It's gonna cover everything original A and B covers and include a drug card, uh, but you still have to pay a Part B premium. Okay. And by the way, there's some Advantage plans, not a lot in Harris County that will actually give you some money back on that Part B premium. Uh, maybe that's right. It's attractive to, to people. There's not a lot of options in Houston for that, but there are one, and one, I'm, one I'm aware of. The next question is from Alan, and he asked, if you have the Advantage PPO, do you pay more for out-of-network doctor or hospital? Absolutely. Right. So, um, in, in, right. So you can, with the PPO, technically you can go to any doctor hospital facility that accepts Medicare. Uh, there's a lot of training that agents have to go through to sell these products. And in the training, they just make this very benign statement that you will have a higher cost share out of network. Um, I think the, your, your out-of-pocket costs would be a lot higher out of network. Uh, you can do it. Uh, maybe for a doctor, uh, certainly for a hospital or procedure, in my opinion, you're going to want to stay in network because there is, um, um, you know, what I find, what I think in many ca cases happens, they're going to reimburse your added network doctor as if they were in network. You know, so say your doctor charges $350 and uh, if they were in network, they would get uh, $80. Uh, they're going to balance bill you the difference. So um, yes, you can. I don't recommend it. Thank you. Great. Uh, and then the, the 
third question that's in the chat is from Lisa. And she asked, is there a book or document that will provide more details of what you've discussed now? Is that just going to the uh, web pages Medicare. or is there something gov. easier? Okay. Medicare.gov. Everything is on that website. That's an excellent website. And I have to share when I did a quick Google to, to maybe help Stephen a little bit with the presentation, I was surprised how there's a ton of books. I don't know if you've read any, but there's a bunch of like, you know, the ACA for dummies, Medicare for dummies. Um, but yeah, my guess is, you know, take Stephen's advice. <laughs> Well, right. There's just plenty of information, but the I mean, if you want the official word, it's it's on America, it's on Medicare.gov. All right. And then, oh wait, I'm sorry. Shelly asked, and then I guess we'll take you, Morris. Uh, Shelly asked, when you call a doctor or facility to see if they are in your network, uh, it isn't good enough to just ask if they take your insurance. You need to have them check your specific network. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, Shelley. That is correct, and that's no, important. I did actually wasn't asking a question, Karen. I was actually it was actually a statement to let right. people know because we've gotten we've gotten uh, burned several times. Have big doctor bills like five hundred dollars for something that shouldn't have cost us anything because we said, oh, do you take? They say, oh yeah, we take Blue Cross Blue Shield, but they have to go into your specific company network and tell you if they're actually participating in that network. So. Yeah, I was actually just sort of adding that to what Stephen was saying, is that it's really important to do that. Sorry, yeah, I should have read it through before okay. I no, announced no, no. to this question. No, you did read it. You, you actually <laughs> did read it, and I understood what you were saying, Shelley, and I'm just agreeing with you. Sure. You are absolutely correct. The question is a couple of things. The question is not do you take Blue Cross, because, you know, they have 16, 20 different networks, and, you know, the girl who answers the phone, she's busy, but, oh, yeah, we take Blue Cross. Uh, you know, so uh, you do want to make sure maybe you're talking to the office manager. Uh, if it's Medicare Advantage, you know, which one? Uh, maybe they take the HMO, not the PPO, or vice versa. Uh, and there are a lot of different networks. And then really uh, the way also is through the insurance company's website. So or if you're on an Advantage, you should be able to log in and uh, see which doctors are in network, or if you're on Medicare Advantage, to be sure you can call the number on your card and you will you know, get a trained representative of that insurance company that could help you determine uh, if the doctor's in network. Uh, the question would be, you know, are, are you in network for you know, United Healthcare, regional PPO, you know, policy number H-225, whatever it is. Um, and again, they're all, the insurance company is going to have a website. That's what I go to uh, is the insurance company website. And I've got to tell you, if I don't see it come up on the website, then I got to say they're not in network. You know, has it happened where they don't show up on the website, but, you know, it's billed under the clinic or whatever, you know, but that happens. But in general, right, you, I have to see it on the insurance company's website for me to say the doctor's in network. And of course, that could always change. And then, yeah, Morris had a question and then it's it's up to you and respect for your time if you want that to be the last or if you oh, wanna uh, take questions okay. if they continue to come. And I have one question. Where's Alan? I wanna know where Alan is. Where, where, where are you? I can't hear them, but whatever. This is the background of mountains, you know, Karen. I'm a mountain man. I like yeah. mountains. Am I, am I muted. So, yeah, Alan, unmute. <laughs> Sorry, uh, that's uh, Colorado last August when it snowed. Oh, this is oh, you're just faking me out. That's just the picture. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> what, what part of Colorado, Alan? Uh, this is Breckenridge. Breckenridge. Okay. Yeah, I recognize it. Looks like Breckenridge. <laughs> no, it's nice. Very it's, nice. It's where okay. we go in the summer for a few weeks. Uh, me too. Uh, so that's great. That's great. I just, uh, you were faking me out. I thought you were there now. I think they got some snow. This I week. wish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't know. It's kind of cold this time of year. Okay. Uh, a healthcare questions. Okay. So uh, my wife and I both have uh, United uh, Healthcare Advantage. Uh, her her plan PPO 
and her plan, uh, I think it's, it may be zero premium. I'm not sure because she's diabetic. She has a different plan. They call it gold. So um, both of our plans, the, the uh, dental coverage is really skimpy. Uh, it just basically covers, you know, just a regular visit or whatever. It doesn't cover any uh, orthodontics, you know, bridge work or anything like that. So are there plans uh, that to really cover, that give you a sort of a comprehensive uh, dental uh, coverage? Uh, yeah, there, there, there are. So a couple of things, and thank you for this question. So there, yes, so there are. Uh, you're going to one thing for sure. You're going to get, you'll only get the maximum benefits out of the plan if you're using a dentist in their network. And that, that could be something too. If you go out of network, um, the benefits could be nil or a lot less. So you've got to read your plan carefully. Uh, there are plans that do say it's comprehensive. Um, but again, I just get back to Joe Namath and he's like listing, oh, you got this, that, that, oh, it's just transportation, money back. This. So these Medicare Advantage plans do have these benefits in them. Not all, not all plans have all benefits. Uh, so you really have to read it carefully. Uh, you should have gotten a summary of benefits, um, should have got any updates for um, uh, 2021, you typically get that in October um, from the insurance carrier, you know, what might be changing. And you've got to read those uh, benefits carefully. And if you don't understand it, the number on your card. And yeah, I think some of these, you know, they say dental, but that's what I recommend reading carefully because right, maybe it just turns out to be preventive. And, and again, if you're not in network, it's not nearly as good. So Yep. Yeah. We're right now, uh, right around. now we're, we've got a supplementary uh, dental envision plan from Teachers Retirement System, but the premiums are very high. And, and uh, sometimes I wonder if we get more benefits than we're actually paying in premiums. Well, uh, I uh, so um, uh, Mars, I don't, I don't pay for dental insurance. In, in my opinion, right. I, I'm not big on it. people want it. I sell it, but I don't carry it personally. Um, seems to me right for real and dental insurance, you know, you're paying 40, $50 a month per person. Um, so it's kind of almost like you're prepaying your two well checkups per year. And if something else happens, maybe, maybe you're going to come out ahead. Um, on the other hand, the dentist has gotten very expensive. So I, I, I don't know, but, um, just uh, maybe call United Healthcare and make sure you really understand those dentists, uh, dental benefits. Maybe if the dentist was in network, maybe there is more benefits than you, you feel like you're getting. Um, I did like Aetna's because it was a go to any dentist and it was just like a cash amount, but they did away with it. I guess nobody felt like I did. That's gone for 2021. But I think most of it is maybe you're not using a dentist in the network and uh, but them, many of them do say they have comprehensive, you know, um, gum disease, crowns, cover major. Um, so you just have to read everything carefully. And actually on Medicare.gov too, you can search for Medicare Advantage plans in the area. And um, you know, I have a short summary, but it, it, it's, it's complicated. It is complicated. All oh, this is amazing. Um, does, is everyone done? Are there any more questions? Because I'm thinking we're good. As I said, I, um, you know, we're experimenting with this registration link, but the nice thing is then I have your email so I can send you follow-up materials. Uh, definitely wanted to thank Stephen Herbert. Um, I actually was looking for someone that had expertise in health insurance for, for several months. It's, it's very complicated and, and very few people are, um, have, have the level of expertise that you have. So I really, really do appreciate you giving us um, your time today. Uh, in terms of upcoming events, we're not having anything the next two weeks because of Thanksgiving. 
And then we will resume with two events in December. We'll have a, um, a meditation service um, with a Hanukkah theme. And Shelly Nadell is going to give us a talk on um, uh, helping our finances in this uncertain time as well, kind of in the same Asking for a Friend series that Stephen spoke today. So stay tuned. Um, once again, Stephen, thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you, Karen, and thank you, everybody that attended. I appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys this morning. Yeah, no, you, you still the need in our community. It's a good crowd today. Great. Okay, thank you, Stephen.